Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a get ready with me while discussing some of the difficulties of dressing vintage and why you should do it anyway. So grab a cup of tea and let's get ready to talk vintage. Because we're getting ready and talking vintage. Alright, so today I am going to do kind of a simple Edwardian inspired look. I'm really just going to volunteer the library today, so not wanting to do anything too exciting, just something simple and quick and easy. This one, I, I do this hairstyle quite often, um, and it's something that doesn't give me a headache. Uh, I have quite thick hair, so when I put all the hair that I have on top of my head, it often gives me a headache after an hour or two, but this hairstyle, for some reason, doesn't. So, uh, yeah, I'll get started on that, and I'll get started by brushing out my hair, which is a feat in and of itself, because like I said, I have quite thick hair, and it gets all tangled when I sleep, and I really should just put my hair up when I sleep, but that's just too much work. So, start by brushing it out. I'm gonna take my glasses off to avoid that hazard. Uh, so, today I wanted to talk about dressing vintage and some of the difficulties that you can run into when starting to dress vintage. And the first thing I wanna talk about in this realm is the idea of accuracy when it comes to dressing vintage and where you should start when you start dressing vintage. And there's, there are some people when they that are in the vintage community or uh, cause tube community that are crazy accurate when they dress. Uh, and that is impressive. That takes a lot of work. It can often take a lot of money uh, just to be able to have all of those pieces in your wardrobe. Um, a lot of uh, people have real vintage items in their wardrobe and that is amazing. Vintage items scare me mainly because if you're purchasing them online, you don't know if they're going to fit, you don't know if they're the quality that they look to be, uh, you don't know how the seller is going to be, uh, you don't know if they could get lost in the mail, or you know, like, there's so many things when it comes to buying real vintage that kind of just scare me. I would like to have real vintage in my wardrobe at some point, but I don't think it's necessary to dress vintage style or to start dressing vintage style. So, when you start dressing vintage, I suggest starting slow, and there is, uh, I did post a video, um, which I will put a link to right here, about how, like, some of the looks that you might want to go for if you're dressing 1940s, 1950s kind of style, um, some of the, the, some of the pieces that you're going to want in your wardrobe to kind of start going in that direction of vintage style. So if you're interested in that, then you can check out that video right here. Uh, but otherwise, you really just want to start slow when it comes to starting to dress vintage. Partly because it can be very expensive just to go headlong into dressing vintage and buying all the pieces that you might need. Because in modern day, we wear a lot of jeans and, uh, I don't know, t-shirts and you're gonna want to start moving into some of the old fashioned kind of styles, trousers and skirts. Uh, so, you know, starting slow, adding one piece at a time, um, kind of transitioning your wardrobe one piece at a time is going to be the best way financially. But it's also kind of an emotional thing and psychological thing starting to go vintage. So starting slow is going to be the best way to uh, transfer into vintage because the first time 
you dress fully vintage style can be a little nerve wracking to go out into public dressed like that. Once you get used to it, it's really no big deal. But the first time I dressed vintage, it was basically using modern clothes that I had in my wardrobe already and experimenting with the hair. And I felt great, but I also felt like I stood out like a sore, thr bleh, 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 sore thumb. <laughs> uh, but now I go out looking like this all the time and I've uh, increase the intensity a bit and now I like I don't even notice so starting slow starting by adding pieces to your wardrobe one at a time starting to dress the way you want and then adding hair and makeup and kind of just like dialing it up slowly because that's going to be the best for your wallet and it's going to be the best for uh for you mentally. And something to consider when it comes to starting vintage is this idea of history bounding, which I think was... My battery died. Anyway, this idea of history bounding, <coughs> which I think was started by Morgan Donner, but I'm not sure about that. Basically, you just take aspects of a uh, historical dress that you enjoy and you add those into your wardrobe so that you can still look modern with historical parts of your outfit that make you feel connected to that vintage or historical style. That is a great way to start dressing vintage because you're only tweaking minor things. And those are things like hair, makeup, jewelry, uh, other accessories like belts, shoes, and it's just like taking it one step at a time, kind of transferring everything over. So history bounding is an awesome way to just putting in those notes that you enjoy into your look without completely leaving the modern realm of dress. And some of you might like that and stay there. And some of you might, uh, might take this idea of history bounding and start with it and delve deeper until you're dressing in 18th century gowns. That is, either way is perfectly great. You are dressing the way you wish to at that point in time. And we all evolve um, and don't feel frustrated with yourself if you start dressing vintage in a couple months or a year or two later, you decide that that's not your thing anymore it's totally acceptable. I've been through a ridiculous amount of styles through my lifetime and some of them I look back on and I'm like, why? <laughs> but I liked it at the time and I'm sure I will continue to evolve and that's just human nature. So when starting vintage, take it slow, take it one step at a time. Uh, don't shock yourself into it. Don't shock your wallet into it. And uh, yeah, just um, be comfortable with where you are and be happy and confident in how you dress and you will become the person that you wish to be and dress the way you wish to be. Dressed. Dress the way you wish to dress. Yes. All right, so for my hair, I'm going to slightly part it on the side. And then just with my finger, I'm going to take from right middle of my head down to right above my ear and take this hair and separate it to the front and push the rest to the back. I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to have a larger chunk on this side because I parted it on this side. I got bangs, like straight across bangs, last year because I do this every couple years where I'm like, I want bangs, I love bangs. And then a couple months I decide I really don't like bangs and then I have to grow them out again. So I'm in that process of growing them out and it's really frustrating. I don't mind them, but it's frustrating because they don't match the rest of my hair. So if I put the rest of my hair up, then that falls forward, drives me crazy. Anyway, 
All right, so the second thing I wanted just to discuss, oh yeah, with my hair, I'm taking this back portion and I'm putting it into a bun on the top of my head. So the next topic I wanted to discuss with you is going to be uh, getting used to the reactions that you might get when starting to dress vintage. And I think for the most part, you're gonna get positive reactions to your, um, to your style. That's really what I get, is I get a lot of people who are like, wow, you look different, but it's cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this, now that my bun is centered-ish, yeah. I'm gonna take this, put it back, making sure that it lies the way you want it to before pinning it in place, and wrap it around my bun. And then pin it with bobby pins that I forgot. With bobby pins. <laughs> so, like I said, I think that for the most part, when you start to dress vintage, you're gonna get mainly positive reactions. A lot of people are just gonna ignore it. They don't care. They might be weirded out or they might think it's cool, but they're not gonna really say anything about it. But you will get some people who are going to be slightly confused by the way you dress. I don't find these either positive or negative. I think it's quite natural for people to be confused by certain things because, because it's, you're not dressing normally. Uh, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. There we go. Um, but yeah, so you're you're going to have people that um, that are just confused, and they might ask you, like, why do you dress this way? I don't think they're really trying to insult you in any way, uh, but they're just asking because you look different, and I find those honestly to be pretty entertaining. I enjoy those questions. Uh, I got a question one time from a woman asking if I was doing that cosplay thing. And, uh, and I was like, no, this is just how I dress. And she was like, okay. <laughs> That's going to be, for the most part, what you get when people are confused. They're either gonna just kind of look at you funny which is something that you're just gonna have to get used to because there are gonna be people who think you look weird. But I think in general, if you get any questions from people, they're gonna be like, you know, is this, are you dressed up for any particular reason or is this just because you like to dress up? And if you're like, I just like to dress up, then I think in general, people are gonna be like, that's, that's cool. <laughs> cool. You will rarely, I think, in my experience, get people who are like, why do you dress this way? You look awful. I think this is ridiculous. Me, 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 me. And you might feel insulted, obviously. And they are probably trying to insult you because they don't like the fact that you are different. And that's when, you do have to grow kind of a thick skin, but what really helps me in those cases is the fact that I know these people are insulting me because they are insecure and have their own issues and they're taking them out on me. And I know that it doesn't really have anything to do with me. And that's what you really need to keep in mind when it comes to dressing whatever way you wish to is just that those who compliment you are the ones that really count and if you feel confident in yourself then for the most part people are going to think you look great 
and the people who come up to you and insult you are taking time out of their day to do this, which means that they've got some issues and they're taking them out on you and it has nothing to do with you. And they're gonna happen more in certain places than others. I happen to live in a fairly cool city that is very accepting and celebrates differences, which is wonderful. And there are many cities out there that don't. So I know that I am lucky to live in this place that allows me to dress the way I wish to, and I don't really get a lot of flack for it. Flack? Is that the right word? Nah. All right. Here we go. So now I'm going to work on my face. Uh, I don't really do anything that exciting with my face. Uh, I'm a lazy human that does not enjoy getting ready for hours. I will say that my normal day consists of no makeup at all. But since we're here, I might as well do just a tad bit uh, because I look like a vampire today and have some dark circles. So uh, let's fix that, I suppose. So now I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of concealer right under here. I get some just pretty minor bags under my eyes uh, when I'm stressed or when um, I've eaten dairy. I just really like cheese, guys. And then I'm just gonna go and smudge that out with my fingers. Now the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to dressing vintage is this idea that has kind of been circulating around the vintage and costuming community for a wee bit. And Kathy Hay actually posted uh, and wrote about this in one of her Instagram posts recently. Uh, and it's this idea that because we dress vintage or we take inspiration from historical fashions, we adhere to and wish to be treated with morals and values of the past. And that's not true. I think for the most part, people in the vintage and cause tubing community are extremely progressive and uh, loving and caring people. And the idea that we believe in any way that we should go back to a time when women couldn't vote, when we were treated as props, when we were burned at the stake for being intelligent, when we were treated as vessels to carry children and nothing more. Of course not. And I think it's kind of a ridiculous idea because here we are being strong enough to dress differently, which is a big deal. I mean, a lot of people in society are terrified to be different in any way, shape, or form. And here we are being able to say, I am going to dress the way I wish to, and you have no right to say that I can't. And so then you have people saying that because we dress this way, we're suddenly hoping that we'll be treated or go to go back to a time when women were treated as nothing. I think it's, it's really kind of silly and contradictory. And now I'm going to do my mascara. <laughs> Excuse me while I don't talk. While I do this. You know what I think is ridiculous? Is that we... I mean, in reality, when it comes to makeup, most of it is around the eyes, right? What about those of us who wear glasses? I mean, my prescription isn't so far gone 
that I need, uh, that it would warrant contacts. Uh, I can still see, but my right eye is really bad and it twitches when I try to fo focus on something without my glasses. And when I'm trying to do makeup, it just, why? Like, I, I feel like I just need to hold my glasses up to like one side. I should just get a monocle. I want a monocle, guys. That'd be so helpful. I'm just doing, <laughs> I'm super sexy when I'm doing this, sorry. I'm just doing some really light eyeliner just to make my eyes pop slightly and not to make me look so vampirish, uh, but nothing so dark to make it look like I'm wearing a crazy amount of eyeliner. Because this is kind of a more Edwardian uh, inspired look and they didn't really wear makeup then, mainly because wearing makeup indicated that you were an actress and back then that wasn't as glamorous as it may seem nowadays. Anyway, so the idea of having a passion for vintage fashion and historical dress equates to believing in and following the morals and the values of the past is wrong, but you may receive some comments along those lines. It's because you have a connection to parts of the past. And for some people, it may just be that you enjoy some of the aesthetics of previous eras. For me, I've always felt like I was born in the wrong time which may seem really weird to some people and others may be like, yeah, totally. <laughs> but I felt like I didn't belong in this time. However, I was born in this time. I am a product of this time. And I believe in a lot of the progressive values of this time. I think and I firmly believe that we should treat everyone with kindness and equality and love and respect. And to go back to a time when you would only be treated that way if you were a land-owning white male with heirs, with land-owning white male heirs, <laughs> that... Uh, uh -uh. There are so many things that I could name that were just awful in the past, and we are growing past them. That's not to say we don't have problems now, but we've grown so much in the past 100 years, and I wouldn't give that up. And I don't think anyone in this community would give that up. Alright, so now that we've just got something nice and heavy, I'm going to go ahead and do my lipstick. It's just a pretty... Uh, are you going to focus? There we go. It's just a pretty neutral color. Nothing like my usual dark goth, uh, intense, dramatic colors. I've grown so accustomed to liquid lipsticks that I'm not really sure how to do these anymore. Now, if I had blush, I would probably do a little bit of blush for this look, but I don't actually own blush. I kind of need to go on a little shopping spree when it comes to makeup, but makeup is hella expensive. So there you are. There's some tips and tricks when it comes to dressing vintage and some of the things that you may have to worry about uh, when it comes to dressing vintage. But I think as long as you feel confident in the way that you're dressing, then it, nothing really matters. Uh, people who give you negative comments are the people who have something wrong going on in their lives and you shouldn't be affected by it and it's gonna hurt the first time but I think it's really important to point out that if you feel good and confident in what you're wearing that's gonna make you look even better and people recognize that and you will get more compliments than you will negative comments. For many of us, negative comments are one in a million. 
it's just not worth your time. All right, so now I think it's time to get some real clothes on and maybe go take a couple pictures for, before going to work slash volunteer job. All right, so now I've got my accessories. I just have a simple necklace, which is like a wee terrarium. Focus. Uh, there we go. And I kind of let it die. It just has a little bit of moss in it. I would just have to put a little drop of water in it like once a month. And we moved. I lost it in a box <laughs> and it died. So now it's just a wee terrarium with dead moss in it. Uh, and no, that is not historically accurate. It's just something that I enjoy uh, and I do hope to put another bit of living moss in there. Um, mainly because I just love having a connection to nature with me at all times. It may sound a little weird. I apologize. And then I have these earrings, which are just cute little pendant or drop uh, earrings. And these were actually the earrings that my mom wore to her wedding. I'm gonna pull out just a little bit of that sideburn hair. <laughs> Make my cute little curls. All right, glasses back on. Oh my God, they're filthy. All right, so I hope this video was helpful to you and your uh, adventure into vintage fashion. I do think it's important to do some research. Uh, if you're interested in vintage fashion, do some research, get an idea of what era or what styles you like. Uh, you don't have to stick to any specific era. It's, that's not important. Obviously, I don't always do 1940s, 1950s. And when I do 1940s, 1950s, or whatever style that I do, I'm not accurate. Uh, you don't have to be. If you wish to get to the point of accuracy, then that's awesome. But that does take a lot of work and a lot of money. So just be aware of that when starting vintage. Be aware of what direction you want to go, what era, what kind of styles you're interested in, and take it from there and experiment. Also be very aware of some of the reactions you might get and be strong. Be happy and be confident because you are doing what you need to do for yourself and that is amazing. A lot of people can't do that. And don't feel obligated to be dressed vintage all the time. I think a lot of people who start dressing vintage feel that this is their style now and they have to keep it up and you don't have to. I have days where I wear flannel and jeans and boots and then I have the next day I have my hair up and curls in and you know Mary Jane's on and that's just you know it's really it's really how you feel that day and how you wish to dress whenever and that's that goes for anyone you don't you shouldn't feel obligated to dress you every day because you change every day. So go forth and be merry and dress vintage how you wish to and when you wish to. Go ahead and leave a question or a comment in the comment section below. Like this video or even subscribe. Have a wonderful week and I'll see y'all next time.